So the cells look around, they say, okay, time to clean up the connective tissue, clean up the home of every cell, this filter through which the oxygen and the nutrition comes in from the blood, through which the toxins and the waste products are eliminated into the lymph system, through which the communication with other parts of the body comes through hormones, through uh, the autonomic nervous system, other parts of the nervous system to communicate and coordinate. If we look at the cancer cell from this perspective, the communication perspective is very interesting because what is a cancer cell? It goes back to a state of just reproducing, of an undifferentiated cell. You know, it starts to look no different whether it's a liver cancer cell or a brain cancer cell. They all look the same. They're undifferentiated. They're no longer like the tissue that they came from as they go further and further into the cancer state. Well, that tells us something, too. They're, they're out of communication. They're out of touch with the rest of the body because that all of these toxins that have built up, they can't receive the communication to even know what kind of cell they are anymore. And they're so busy just uh, holding the, the toxic waste. So the system for information and for clarification of what is the function is not available because right. of the toxicity. Right. And so that's how that cell loses its way. Right. and becomes its own expression right. different than what it intended to do. Right, until we can get at the energy to clean out, to repair itself, to rebuild normal healthy tissue where it's in communication with the rest of the body. So the first step of moving away from health, out of balance, is this step where the body is exposed to junk that it can't eliminate. And what's it going to do with it? It stores it in the connective tissue, of course, because mm -hmm. the only other place is in the cells. And the cells are where the action is. That's the most important place. You want to protect that, protect the mitochondria, protect the nucleus. That's why they have additional barriers and membranes. You know, why does the body create high cholesterol? You know, from this perspective, it's not a disease at all. The body will produce a high level of cholesterol when it's exposed to toxins that it's, have already filled up the connective tissue and are starting to penetrate inside the cell. Why? Because cholesterol is a necessary component of the cell membrane that shores up and strengthens that membrane to prevent toxins from getting inside the cell. It's an intelligent response. Now, our intelligent response to measuring the cholesterol and seeing that it's high is going to be to detoxify the body so the liver gets the message, oh, we don't need to make that much cholesterol anymore. We'll bring the level down. Rather than putting in a toxic chemical that kills the enzyme that makes cholesterol and therefore kills you know, or reduces the function and energy in the liver, and so it can't do its other jobs as well. And, and the studies, uh, epi epidemiological studies, bear this out. Cholesterol-lowering drugs don't lower the death rate. They just change the nature of the disease that people die from, and you get more cancer and other diseases because the toxins are getting inside the cells more easily. So again, we're looking at when we separate and identify an issue as an issue unto itself, not as a message or messenger of the body whole, of the body wellness, then we miss the mark about what is this part playing, what is the, the message, what's the guideline, what's the red flag in right. some cases that this is saying, you know, you're off course here. So that if we really are educated to learn to read the symptoms mm -hmm. as a part of our wholeness and the body's complete and innate desire and divine plan to be healthy, then we would be moving in relationship in, with this physical body in a very different way. Right. And so then that brings us to phase five, and what do you see phase five? Phase five is we call balance. Uh, phase four was called cleansing. Uh, phase five is called balance, and we're dealing really with stress. Any kind of, that doesn't just mean psychoemotional stress, it can be toxic stress, electromagnetic stress, any, all the little life stresses that affect us and want to push us out of balance, that our body in that normal balance state is able to compensate for and control for without having to build up unfinished business. So once we're in that state, you know, things may still push us out if there's strong enough stress into one of those other phases, but we can quickly repair our health and, and by understanding the roadmap, know what kind of tools to reach for to support that process. Because we can, let's take allergy for example. Someone can have an allergy symptom and they can reach for an antihistamine which the studies show moves the body toward that phase one chronic degenerative cancer zone. It takes away the symptom temporarily, right? But now it gives us side effects, 
So that's one clue. If, it's, if, if something takes away the symptom but it gives us side effects, we got to watch out because it's saying it's not just supporting the body and completing its task and taking away the symptom because the job is done. It's shoving it aside. It's putting, pushing it over somewhere else. We get drowsiness with, with antihistamines. It's saying it's pushing some toxins into the brain. Well, that's not a good idea, right? Because that's the one cell you can't regenerate. On the other hand, there's energetic solutions that will stimulate the body rather than suppressing. There's a difference, a key difference here. Rather than blocking the body's function that produces the symptom, which is an attempt to rebalance and heal itself, we want to stimulate that pathway or maybe stimulate additional parallel pathways to deal with that problem, to deal with other stresses, to detoxify the body. Uh, in this case, because we're in a cleansing phase and we need to cleanse the body. Allergies, if it's coming out the eyes, it's because you're loaded up to the, to the eyeball level with something that needs to get out. Not just the allergens, that's just the last straw that triggers the, the immune reaction to say, hey, can't come in here, We've, we're already filled up. We're going to have to try to push some stuff back out through the mucous membrane. We get the itchiness and redness and swelling. But what we really need is to get the kidneys working better. Oriental medicine has known this for thousands of years. Homeopathy has known this for hundreds of years. That we need to stimulate the body to work more efficiently in other areas, not just to focus on the symptom area. Oh, it's the eye, so we're just going to treat the eye. No, the eyes don't produce disease on their own. They need the digestive tract to supply nutrients. They need the circulation to supply oxygen and the, and the nutrition uh, and to take away the waste. They need movement of the body to pull... Uh, the lymph out of the, the head through the bottleneck uh, of the neck and to clean out and detoxify the sinus areas around the eyes. In your professional opinion right now with where we are, say, in America, do you feel that most people's bodies are in a state of imbalance? Yes. And needing to return to the energy, the regeneration, all the things we've just talked about. Absolutely. More so in America than, than any other country. We are, for one thing, we're the most overfed and undernourished people. Look at the over 100 pounds of refined sugar a year per American, and maybe it's up to 200 pounds by now. That's depleting nutrients. It's depleting chromium. It's depleting B vitamins, uh, vitamin C, lots of nutrition that our body needs to fight all the toxins that our ancestors never had in their environment. Mm -hmm. We need more of that, and yet there's less in the food, and the more it's refined, the less and less there is. Even if it was in the soil, by the time you make that beet uh, or that cane into refined sugar, there is nothing there but sugar and residues like nickel and the toxins from so the processing. So our scale of balance is really getting very extreme then, even from our very young children. This isn't just about aged or degenerative conditions. This is present in our very young. And so I, I know that you have information to provide also for homeopathics and herbs and alternative mm -hmm. methods that can support each of these phases. Right. So can you give us information on those? Yes. Uh, what we've done in the Remission Foundation Clinic over the years is we work with individuals because, first of all, if you're dealing with natural health and, and, and self-healing, it's really the only way that works is to look at your body. Your body is going to be different than another person's body, even if they have the same blood pressure, or the same cholesterol level, or the same disease diagnosis. doesn't matter. Your chemistry, your energetic pattern is unique. There's going to be different underlying causes to that same, you know, maybe two cases of breast cancer. Even if it's the same type of breast cancer, it doesn't matter. There may be different triggers, different causes, different blocks at mind, body, and spirit level that are preventing that person from getting to that re-energizing stage of phase two, rejuvenating and, and the healing crisis. So we need to address the individual. We need to therefore educate the individual. Uh, and that's largely what energetic medicine is about, is literally wiretapping into the body's own energy system, communicating with it, asking the questions on an energy stimulus basis, getting a response that tells us a yes or a no or, or a level of stress response to maybe different organ tissues. If the body shows a stress reaction to a homeopathic ampule of healthy liver tissue, that tells us there's a stress in the liver. The liver is reacting with a stress response. If there's then a cancellation of that stress response with uh, powder arco, let's say, an herb that's an antifungal herb, well, that's another piece of information. It tells us, oh, there's something about that. Maybe it's the antifungal properties, maybe antiviral or antibacterial properties of the powder arco that are then energetically 
redirecting the circuitry of the body to where the body knows that with that stimulus present, in other words, if we had it in our diet, we're taking it every day, that it won't need to react that way because that energy coming in is going to handle it. Pain, for example, is an indicator of low energy state. And so the shark essence is very helpful with that. In phase two, then we have a program called rejuvenation, uh, which combines a number of different uh, products, uh, including DHEA, and it's a life form DHEA, not be made from synthetic petrochemicals, like we talked about the coal being, you know, look, it's black, it's dark, it has no light or life energy left because it's been sitting there under the ground, no light, uh, and, and processed by heat and pressure and pressure and pressure over time, that over time, that has already released all of that life energy. So we need uh, food source nutrients of, in all these uh, products that we're talking about. Uh, in all the, all the programs that we'll talk about, we also utilize some things that are common to all of them that we all need. We talked about the depletion of minerals and vitamins in the food and the soils. Of, of products that you would see are necessary for each of the phases. Mm -hmm. In, in phase one, uh, some of the, the key factors would be, uh, for example, a product like shark essence that's a homeopathic and energetic solution that reactivates the mitochondria. We have energy studies that measure photon or biophoton light energy emission from living cells. And we know from the biophoton studies that when a cell goes through a healing process, so going from phase one to phase two, for example, that it will emit these biophotons, and literally those, they're like the biophotons that come from the food that give us the energy that would be normally carried by the electron transport chain. So the studies of biophoton emissions show that the shark essence of 5,000 different products that have been studied releases more of this biophoton light energy. So I call it new spark plugs for the cell. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not something that you have to do for life. It's a short-term process for most people. If it's a real chronic, real deep problem, they might take it over a prolonged period of, of months or even a couple of years until they're out of that phase one area. But it's specific to the phase one process of re-energizing the cell. Another key one is an energetic solution called Energescence. And this is one, it's different, this is one that everyone can use, whether you're in phase one or phase five. Everyone needs more circulation to the cell to get the oxygen to the cells to reach that 100% peak capacity. And that's what Energessence does. It literally opens up the circulation, delivers the oxygen and the nutrition, and better than any other product that we've ever measured with the a Vega test method where we can measure toxicity level, it helps to drain out the toxicity level. It's a lymph drainage remedy par excellence. Mm -hmm. So that combination uh, we, we have in a program that's called a health restoration program for people in that phase one zone where maybe they haven't had the flu or fevers or colds for, for many years. That's an indication they need to start with this program. Or they know that they have some chronic degenerative or low energy state that they need to start with this until they, they may go through uh, cleansing response, some kind of flu-like response uh, with when they enter phase two, that's a nice indicator that you've changed. Other people, if it's less severe, may not go through those particular symptoms. We want to watch for uh, improved energy and that, yes, now you can drop off the shark essence. Uh, pain, for example, is an indicator of low energy state. And so the shark essence is very helpful with that. In phase two, then we have a program called rejuvenation, uh, which combines a number of different uh, products, uh, including DHEA, and it's a life form DHEA. Very important uh, that the DHEA not be made from synthetic petrochemicals, like we talked about the coal being, you know, look, it's black, it's dark, it has no light or life energy left because it's been sitting there under the ground, no light, uh, and, and processed by heat and pressure over time that has already released all of that life energy. So we need uh, food source nutrients of, in all these uh, products that we're talking about. Uh, in all the, all the programs that we'll talk about, we also utilize some things that are common to all of them that we all need. We talked about the depletion of minerals and vitamins in the food and the soils. We have a product that's called Star Gold that covers those 80 plus nutrients and cofactors that we all need to add to the diet to make sure that we have all the, the ingredients and building blocks that we, that we need and also friendly flora that gives us the bacterial flora, the healthy, beneficial, aerobic flora 
that we need to help with uh, producing digestive enzymes, to increase our absorption of nutrients, to uh, work with fiber uh, in the diet or fiber supplementation, to, to feed the, the lining of the colon, to, to heal that, to prevent leaky gut and food allergies. Mm-hmm.